Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of On the Serato with Jackie Van Ham and my buddy Josh bringing you all of the newest news going on out here in motorcycles and power sports. Welcome back. Welcome back. If you are new to the show, welcome. Welcome to the program. If you're a regular watcher, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate each and every one of you clicking, Definitely. liking, and sharing all of these videos with your friends who love watching and hearing about awesome things going on out here in motorcycling. I clearly have had too much coffee today, but we're going to jump right into right the amount. I think it's just the right amount. Um, I know from my <laughs> neck of the woods, I'm going to be talking about World Superbike says, show me the money. And I'm going to be also talking a little bit about the fastest woman on earth. Josh, what you got going on for today? I, both of my topics are electrifying. And I'm just going to leave it at that because <laughs> what's, I mean, between your amount of coffee and me saying that, I think we're good. <laughs> I've got chills, Josh. I've got chills. And we'll find Perfect. out more about that story and all of the rest after this word from our sponsors. There are still billions of dollars available for businesses through the Employee Retention Credit Federal Tax Credit Program. Stenson Tamadon has helped companies with less than 500 employees retrieve over $3.4 billion in tax credits through Employee Retention Credits. Call Stenson Tamadon today at 866-934-8461 today to start your application. That's 866-934-8461 to apply. Call now. Welcome back, everybody. As promised, I've got a handful of exciting stories going on for you today, including a little bit of World Superbike says, show me that money and the world's fastest woman. I've got those two stories coming up, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. My first story for today is a little bit of like a twofer. It's kind of two stories in one. The first part of the program or first part of this story is the fact that Ducati revealed this absolutely beautiful Panigale a handful of weeks ago. Oh, that's Josh's slide. <laughs> I was like, that's not a Panigale. <laughs> it's close. But it is very cool. And you know, I know how I know that's Josh's slide. It's because it's dirt bikes. It's always be dirt bikes over here. There we go. Thank you, Ashley. So Ducati <laughs> went ahead and revealed this absolute stunner Panigale. I, you know, sport bikes aren't really necessarily my thing, but even I had to take a second and clutch my pearls and make myself a delicious cappuccino for this Italian sex bomb when this was revealed a week or two ago. So that was one part of the story. But now here's the other interesting part of the story, and that is this press release just released by the folks over at World Superbike talking about how they're raising their price cap for their bikes for 2023. When Ducati revealed the 2023 Panigale V4 last week, uh, the the press raised an eyebrow when they saw that 44 plus K price tag because that is above the 40K limit that World Superbike has placed on its bikes. In case you were not aware, World Superbike has a restriction on their bikes. They have to be production models and they cannot be over $40,000 in order to keep the competition close. So the, the press, the media, and everybody who follows the sport saw this beautiful Panigale, realizes this is the ultimate weapon for World Superbike, but at 44K, head scratcher. So the, the, the folks over at World Superbike just revealed a press release saying that they are going to raise the pricing cap. And they also dropped the price of the Panigale just slightly. They brought it down for the 2023 model to 43,900. 190 euro um and sorry that 40 that that price cap was in euro not dollar anywho they dropped the price tag just a little bit under that 44 plus and then they also went ahead the super bike commission announced changes to the world championship regulation including an increase to the price cap to the price cap on production models 
uh, that this announcement includes this paragraph. Due to the global economic situation and the recorded inflation, the FIM wished to consider the cost evolutions of production machines for 2023. A general proposal for maximum percentage of increase of the maximum retail price of homologate, homologated production models was approved. The exact amounts and percentages will be published at a later stage. And the announcement notes the exact amount of the increase will be announced later, but we think it's safe to say that the new price cap will be 44,000 euros or a whopping 10 euros more than the Panigale V4's new price tag. The timing of the rule change also explains why Ducati pushed the Panigale V4's announcement back by a week. Ducati initially scheduled the launch for October 7th, but announced on the 6th that its world premiere presentation would be postponed due to organi organizational reasons. So I thought that this was just really very interesting and very funny news. I mean, it's not the first time um, FIM, Dorna, and global racing committees have slightly flexed, bended, or flat out just change the rules to appease one of their biggest partners. Uh, but I just thought that this was really kind of funny and interesting news. And I wanted a chance to also showcase that beautiful Panigale, an absolute stunner, super, super gorgeous. Josh, what do you think about this story and what's going on over at Ducati and World Superbike? It's always funny to me because it's the, the homologation stuff is always ironic is what we'll put it at whether it be motorcycles whether it be cars whether it be sailboats these homologation rules yeah. i mean i remember 25 years ago when the aprilia had the sps uh rsv melee then ducati had the 996 sp they made like 200 of these bikes or 300 of these bikes and then there was even kawasaki had the zx7 rr which, I mean, they made for one year, they made 300 of them, and that was it. So it's homologation stuff is always interesting, and it's, but it's a way for them to still have competitive bikes and to sell a few special bikes and to do all this other stuff and to go racing. So to me, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it is, it's ironic. They all treat it like it's all very <laughs> professional and it's all very, oh, <laughs> this just happened to be this. And you're like, okay. Put, put the pitchfork down. We know what's going on. Just go race. <laughs> I pulled my tall boots on uh, because I knew right. I was going to be wading through it. Uh, yeah, no, no, Correct. I totally agree with you. I, I, that's the part of the story that just really cracked me up. Is like, we know this happens. Let's not play games. Everybody does it. Here in the U.S. this past year, the word on the street has been for American flat track racing that they were going to change the rules because Indian motorcycle that has been absolutely dominating over there for the past five or six years has a motorcycle motorcycle that really is just purpose-built race bike it is not yep. tech it is i mean technically it was for sale but like they are all gone they only made like 100 of them or whatever they're all gone yep. anyway the word on the street was that they were going to get rid of this it wasn't going to happen they were going to change the rules it was going to be production models only again Nope, that is not the case. They just released the rules this past week and they are going to allow all of those same twins classes and they are changing it to just one twins class and one singles class again versus the past handful of years where it's been super twins, which is the more race oriented right. bikes, aka Indian motorcycles versus production twins class, which is a separate class, which has actually been very, very exciting, by the way. Anyway, so I will climb off of my soapbox. I just thought it was very funny, and I love the fact that they went ahead and threw the old this is inflation related excuse in Correct. here. Yeah. Uh, but bravo. And also, you know, a big, I wanted to give a big round of applause to the folks over at Ducati because that bike is an absolute stunner. Josh, what do you have going on in your neck of the woods? So, yeah, not to mention the power that that thing creates. I mean, it's, it's more than most sedans. So, speaking yeah, it's a of V4, BS. Crazy. Yeah, so speaking of BS, <laughs> normally you don't take electric motorcycles where there is the chance that you may run over some BS. Um, this mm. is about to change as the BDR, Backcountry Discovery Routes, and Zero have announced a multi-year partnership. And I, I mean, Jackie, you and I both talk, we both love the electric motorcycles and stuff like this. And you know, I like yep. riding out where people don't want to bother me. Or I mean, no one really wants to be around me, but I want to make sure they can't <laughs> find me. 
So what I think is so cool about this is Zero and BDR kind of got together because they both said, hey, we've got this shared vision of preserving riding opportunities and driving positive economic value to these like rural areas. Um, so they've set up to raise awareness and grow the network of charging stations that are around some of these BDR routes. Um, so Zero just released, and that's the uh, bike that you see here in this photo, is the DSR slash X. Um, what I, I found so interesting about this is this is an adventure bike. This is not, I mean, this is not like some of the other ones where it's, hey, it's, it, it's, more of a dirt bike with a road bent to it. This is more of a road-ish bike that's very off-road capable. Um, but the fact that they are making this so that way it can go on some of these BDR routes to me is pretty awesome. They are now, they're currently, the BDR website highlights charging stations within 25 miles of the BDR routes. So that way, if you want to take your zero out on these routes, go ahead and do it because you're going to be able to find charging stations and you're going to be able to get to them. Um, to me, that's just the coolest part about this. The coolest thing that they have promised to be coming down the pipeline is within the next two years, the Northern California BDR and the uh, Black Hills, South Dakota BDR are going to be released. And when you see when these routes are released, one of the cool things that Backcountry Discovery Routes does is they release a video that has the scouting and other things involved with it. A zero DSR slash X is going to go along on these two routes and be a part of that filming. So that to me is kind of that proof of concept of hey, yep. It can do this. So to me, I mean, we, we've we watched this, this stuff change over the years and even just over the past year that we've done our our broadcast here, Jackie. And to me, the, the thing that I like about this is is the, the analogy that came to mind for me is if you think watches, because years and years and years ago, there were watches that were, I mean, just your regular old analog watch in the 80s. Yes, I was enough of a dork that I had a calculator watch. Then you kind of move to some of the Fitbit stuff. And now we've got our current ones that, I mean, it's basically a phone. I think we're kind of in between that calculator and Fitbit area, which is a neat area to get in because this technology is coming. And I think it's going to be an awesome part to be a part of this ride. I, I mean, are, are uh, what are your thoughts on this, Jackie? I mean, what do, what do you see as this is the future here? Well, I mean, you and I do talk e-bikes an awful lot on this program. I'm a huge advocate, particularly yeah. of dirt-based e-bikes, um, simply because it helps preserve the natural environment that you are in yep. um, by not making a lot of noise. So I really like that. I like that idea like an awful lot. I like using the Zero because if I'm correct, the Zero has that swappable battery technology. So I like that because you can pack a spare with you in case you run out of, run out of juice while you're out there they're brapping around silently as it were um 25 miles away from bdr is the next charging station uh, i'm gonna give them a little bit of a a little bit of a this for that because you know the average range on a lot of these machines is about 100 miles so that's really mm -hmm. kind of out of the way to go charge but I still love where their head is at. I love that they're thinking yes. about it. I love that they're including zero. The bikes are rad. Most people that are going to this anyway are going out here and riding these BDR events. Uh, Josh, you may or may not know. Most of them also are in RVs or great big beautiful sprinter vans and have juice and electrics and they can charge these bikes, you know, <laughs> at, at the camp at night. So, um, Anyway, though, that all being said, I love the idea of a Sturgis, South Dakota-based BDR. That is excellent. I don't think enough people know about all the incredible dirt riding that exists out there. I yeah. think Sturgis, and ironically, I'm wearing a Sturgis shirt today. Um, I think people really just affiliate it only with the Sturgis rally and kind of overlook the fact that it's 
gorgeous country and yes. absolutely brilliant, brilliant dirt and fire road riding out there. Um, so I, I'm here for it. I think it's incredibly exciting and, and super cool. So bravo to them. I'm excited to see uh, some of the footage from their reconnaissance missions and also see their routes and hopefully be able to ride one of these excellent routes myself. Now, sure. on a little bit different topic, but also kind of related because it is a little bit of Sturgis based. And I am wearing the shirt and I'm actually wearing a, a shirt uh, for my next subject. Um, a really, really incredibly special to me and millions of other people documentary just came up on HBO Max this past week. This is the documentary that has taken a hot minute to produce because there just was so much footage and so much going on. Um, this is The Fastest Woman on Earth. This is the documentary starring Jesse Combs. Um, Jesse Combs was on multiple television programs. A lot of folks may or may not know she also raced competitively in quad and four-wheeler type stuff. She also raced cars and had car stuff she also was involved in motorcycles i mean just all sorts of incredible incredible stuff i think good fortune being friends with jesse in real life a very very inspirational woman always a uh, very positive very upbeat and she definitely shared the kind of attitude that i have also which is no don't live here um it was it was we can do anything we put our minds to so i wanted to give a little bit of love to this documentary that just came up on hbo if you're not familiar with it, um, a little bit of a story about it. It's hard to believe it's been three years since the world lost um, speed-obsessed Jessie Combs. Even though she's no longer with us, absolutely no one who knew of her is keen to let her accomplishments fade and have forgotten memory anytime soon. This case in point is this HBO Max documentary, The Fastest Woman on Earth. This is the official documentary about Combs, her accomplishments, and her life. Um, I don't want to spoiler alert. I don't want to ruin anything. But in June 2020, the Guinness World Records Organization officially declared Jesse Combs to have achieved fastest land speed record for female. She set this record on August 27, 2019 at the Alvor Desert in Oregon, not long before her untimely death later that day. So this is really incredibly special. It also covers a little bit of footage of her meeting and talking to Kitty O'Neill, who was a woman who previously held the title, to kind of ask for her blessing to compete and break her record. So just really incredibly touching, really, really very special. I know I keep saying it, but really, really very special human being who is inspirational, who, inspirational, who is an inspiration to men and women all around the world. Um, I also want to just dovetail this story into that I will be have the good fortune of being at SEMA in Las Vegas next week. I will be working with the crew called The Real Deal Revolution, which is a foundation that she co-founded with another woman that I am friends with, Teresa Contreras. The two of them founded this Real Deal Revolution, which is a hands-on, live and in-person workshop setting, teaching you how to do um, leather work, work, welding, just a great DIY workshop that travels all around the United States and hopefully globally going forward. Um, I will be with these awesome, and it's all woman oriented, it's all women that are teaching these skill sets. So I will be with these incredible women next week out at SEMA. So make sure you stop by and come say hello to us at the Real Deal Revolution. So Josh, what do you think about that? To me, it's interesting because there's, there's, a lot of people that are very good at either the application or the design. It is very difficult and it's very rare to find people that are good at both. And she was one of the ones that, yes, was amazing at both. And then on top of it, had the charisma to get people to pay attention. Um, so to me, it's, yeah, to have to for this, uh, I guess I would say for this honor um, for someone to make a documentary on someone like this is is much needed, and uh, I haven't watched it yet, but it's uh, it's definitely on my list to watch. So yeah, I'm I am definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, make sure you check it out this week. It is very very powerful and a really really fascinating look into a fascinating human being, and I'm that sure. is Jesse Combs. Okay, what's your second story for today, Josh? So to me is once again, sticking with my electrifying theme, I should see if I could get my hair to stand up, but no, is uh, <laughs> Moto E just announced that they are expanding to 16 races, which to me is an awesome thing. Now, Ducati, once again, we've talked a little bit about Ducati, I believe already today, maybe. 
Um, <laughs> they are the ones that will supply, be supplying all the motorcycles for the Moto E series. So this, and I mean, one of the things that I like about the Moto E series is it very much does come down to the rider. Who is able to figure this out? Who is able to dial this in? And who is able to get this going in the right direction at the right time. So they are set up as 16 races over eight rounds. There will be two races, obviously, at each round, um, one of which is an interesting one that's a new one. This will kick off at Le Mans at, on May uh, 12th through the 14th. They're visiting Mugello, the Sashen Ring, Assen, Silverstone, Red Bull Ring, Catalonia, and then they are concluding at Misano. Now, the thing that I found that was interesting about this is they are running at Silverstone, and a lot of the buzz that was talked about with this, <laughs> Silverstone's <laughs> got some of the highest straightaway speeds out there. Um, so seeing how these Moto e-bikes do at Silverstone is going to be very very interesting is this going to be like a moto 3 type of thing where it's a giant draft fest or is this going to be where there's some gearing options is this gonna I, I mean there's all sorts of questions that come into that that i think they're going to be able to take and turn into exciting racing this year to me i i mean i guess i would say i've watched quite a few of the moto e series over the past year i've actually thoroughly enjoyed it it is very tight racing what questions do you guys have that we should be looking at and answering we're wondering about how many laps wondering like times when they're going to race We'd love to hear your feedback. By all means, put it in the comments. Let's see what we can get answered for you. Are you going to be tuning into some of these, Jackie? Yeah, absolutely. I did catch wind of that news this past week also. So thank you for bringing it up on today's yeah. show that they're expanding their e-bike racing. I think yeah. that is really, really interesting news and very exciting uh, additional yes. racing to an already incredible MotoGP weekend. Uh, and you're right. On some of these that have super, super fast straights where it is just wide open to the throttle, you know, that's how this battery life is dictated. People always like to ask yep. about range, talk about range when they're talking about e-bikes. And it's like, well, that's not really a fair question because it depends on how much of this you do is how much battery Correct. you have. So it's uh, it's going to be very interesting to watch, and I'm not going to lie. I, would, I definitely would expect to see one or two of these bikes poop out, uh, especially on last lap, because we have that happen in MotoGP every once in a blue moon. You know, they have to – every ounce yep. counts, and so they will calculate down to the – you know, down to the ounce of like how much fuel needs to go in that bike to make it through all of those laps. And sometimes yep. they guess wrong, or sometimes there's a headwind, or sometimes they didn't, don't do as much drafting as they thought or whatever, and they will absolutely poop out on the last lap. So I expect the e-bike class to uh, not be very much different, and I will definitely be keeping an eye out for it. For sure. And uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a Ducati, Ducati, Ducati day, and a bravo for them, because again, this, this is their e-bike version that they're going to be going going racing with not to be confused with the Panigale at the beginning of the show but I, when this was revealed you and I both talked about it on the program here as always if you missed it shame on you but you can go back down thread here on our Facebook page or out there on YouTube and watch the show but you and I both thought that this was absolutely beautiful what a gorgeous oh, sure. design from from the folks at Ducati so Bravo to them. It's just a whole Ducati, Ducati, Ducati kind of day, I guess. And with that, <laughs> I am going to wish each and every one of you to have a great day yourself. Thank you so much for tuning in, clicking, liking, and sharing all of our videos. As always, as Josh said, go ahead, throw it in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know if you have any questions or things you'd like to see covered out for here sure. on the show. We will do our best to accommodate. Have a great week, everybody. See you next week.